Hello everyone, Debbie here. Welcome back to Barossa Valley Crafts. So I did seven tutorials on using the new Lavinia Dinkles um, powders and I'm now going to do cards that correspond with those tutorials that I did using the Dinkles. So this will be number one of seven. And this will match up with the number one of seven tutorial I did where I actually created the backgrounds. So this is a finished card. I will add the link to the tutorial where I created the background so you can see how it was done and what colours were used. And then you can watch this one again if you want to to see the outcome from using those um, backgrounds. So this is one of the ones that we did. And now I'm going to do the same stamping on this background, which is the second one that was done. So let me show you how I have done this and what I have used. So I've used Lavinia stamps. And the first one we're going to be using is the Forest Cap Toadstool. So this one. So we're going to just ink it up with um, Nocturne. So I use Versafine Clear when I'm doing my stamping. And this one's Nocturne, which is black. So we'll just ink up the stamp. And pop that into place. Now, all of the cards that I'm doing here, I have trimmed down to be four by five and a half inches. Uh, just, I think this ink pad might be a bit dry. I'll just do a little bit more up here. Make sure you allow time for the ink to soak into the card. There we go, that's better. Now I'll just clean the ink off that stamp. I always clean them as I go. Okay, so now the next one will be the small pixie houses. So I'll just work out where you want them. I'm doing them at different heights because I'm going to create hills as well and they will look like they're sitting on tops of the hills when we're finished and ink that one up so the stamp press I'm using today is Couture Creations stamp press I like using a stamp press because if you don't stamp it properly, and if nothing has moved, you can stamp on exactly the same spot, which is great. Okay, so that's that one done. And now we're going to create the hills. So to do the hills, I'll just use a piece of paper, which I conveniently forgot to get. Hang on, I'll just grab my paper. There you go, so I thought I was organised, but I wasn't. <laughs> okay, so to create hills, I just get a piece of normal copy paper and I just tear it making little undulations as I go. Now to do the hills, I'm going to be using Twilight in Versafine Clear. So we'll put the big mushroom first. So we'll just create a hill for the mushroom to be sitting on. So we'll just pop some ink on the brush. And then starting on the paper, flick downwards to create the hills. 
So when you're doing more than one hill, do the first one a bit darker because as you go up, you will do them lighter so it looks like they're in the distance. So now we'll put, make sure I do them on separate hills. So now we'll do this one. I'll not move it. I don't want the hills too uniform. So I'll we'll just do this one. Do a little hill for this one. Shall do it that way. And the last one. Uh, I might have that one on an angle like that. So you can do the hills any which way you like. Just use your imagination and See how you go. So now there's all different levels of hills. So while I've got this one out, I'm now going to just go around the edge of the card with the twilight as well. Just to darken the edge a bit. And it then sort of frames your picture as well. Now, if when you do some, if you've got these white patches, you can either blend a little bit of ink over them or you can leave them white. Totally up to you. Okay, so that's that bit done. Now we're going to use the celestial tree, the small one. And we'll get back the stamp press. into there and work out where you want the tree so I want it sitting on this hill here and it'll go off the page a bit as well and that's fine but what I'm going to do because I don't want it to go past that hill I'm going to just add a bit of a mask here so it doesn't stamp past that hill that up and ink that with the nocturne and pop that into place here we go so that's all the stamping done and you can see there now it looks like that tree is sort of behind that hill by doing the masking on that. And now, just pop that one away. So now I'm going to do some orchard grass. Just pop this out of the way, I don't need that now. So I'm just going to use a little acrylic block for this part of it. And I'll use again the Nocturne. And we'll just stamp some orchard grass. When you're doing it, don't do them all straight. Do them all different angles. Do first and second generation to get shaded colours. Looks like they're in the background when they're done with the second generation stamp. And now I'll just clean this one off. And we'll do a little bit of decorative work. So as you can see here, I've added some bits and pieces to add a bit more colour to the mushroom. So what I'm using now, I'm using Posca pens, a gold gel pen and a white jelly roll pen. 
So I'm just going to do some yellow dots on the mushroom. You can do as many or as little as you like. So while I'm doing this, I'll just let you know I have a couple of Facebook groups. One's called Card Making for Beginners and Beyond. The other one is called Barossa Valley Crafts. I'll add the links below in the description. And um, if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome. And we'll do some red ones. So Posca pens are really good. You get all different size nibs on them to do various jobs. I have done a tutorial using Posca pens. And we'll just do the edge of the mushroom. So you don't have to use these same stamps. You can use any stamps that you've got in your stash. Okay, and then we'll do some white ones. Some little white dots. Again, as many or as few as you like. I won't do too many because you don't want to sit here and watch me doing them all. And then I'm using the gold uh, jelly pen just for the windows. Just to highlight the windows a little bit. And then... So this is another Posca pen. This is a sparkly one. And I'm going to just do the flowers that are on the mushroom stem. There we go. And then I have cut a matte card and I have set this onto a matte card and then a base card to finish it. So that's how it would look on a matte card. So I hope you've enjoyed that and if you have do give me the thumbs up and do feel free to subscribe if you'd like to be notified of um, more tutorials as they come and thank you for joining me and catch you all soon. Bye.